the morbidity and mortality from infectious disease, which we, we should. So you hear a lot, I'm sure, about the mortality from HIV, from TB, from malaria, and we have all these, you know, beat malaria campaigns, and we have all these, you know, initiatives and all this foreign funding coming in to tackle the triple epidemic. And I think that that's very, very good. But how often do you hear a beat trauma campaign? And trauma, actually on a global scale, uh, accounts for more deaths in the world than HIV, TB, and malaria combined. And 13% um, of deaths across the world are caused by trauma and injury. And I think that why it's difficult to attract funding and to attract interest is because there's no, there's no simple solution, there's no straightforward solution um, for trauma. So for HIV, a patient goes on antiretrovirals and the HIV is managed. And for TB, they go on antibiotics for a year and the TB is adequately managed. But to manage trauma, you need a mechanism um, to transport that patient at 3 a.m. in the morning when they have their accident driving on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, not just to any hospital in Lagos, but to the right kind of hospital to handle their kind of trauma. So that means that there needs to be a pickup mechanism there at three o'clock in the morning in a few minutes after the injury. And there needs to be adequate transportation, safe transportation into Lagos. Then there needs to be a control system where the people in the ambulance that have picked up that patient can communicate with the hospitals and find out whether the right professionals are there, whether all the machines and diagnostic equipment needed to treat that patient is in place. And all that needs to be done in a few minutes, in a maximum of an hour. We call that the golden hour. So the golden hour of trauma is the 60 minutes after an accident where you're most likely to save the patient. So it's a very, very complex problem. You can't give that man at 3 a.m. a pill and say, take these for six months and okay. everything will be OK. Um, so I think the major problem in Africa um, at the moment with trauma is that um, it's a complex problem okay. and needs a complex solution, structured okay, well, just, solution. Just quickly tell us you, what your areas of focus are, the people mm -hmm. that you evacuate in an emergency situation, are they mostly from rural areas or where else? Um, they're mostly from rural areas, so areas that lack the appropriate um, sort of medical care. Uh, we evacuate across the West African subcontinent, so we evacuate from Chad, Niger, Cotonou, Mali, um, sometimes into Nigeria, sometimes outside Nigeria. But the whole concept of our air ambulance, I guess, like any air ambulance anywhere in the world, is to remove people from an area where they've overwhelmed the level of care available to them to a more suitable level of care for them. Now, if you're looking at you know majority of your the patients that you evacuate, you know, coming from rural areas, we know that those are very low income areas. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a drag on your finances? Uh, is it something they can afford? Um, I think the affordability of healthcare is a worldwide emergency at the moment. And I think that we really, really need to look at how we can provide solutions to Africa's poor. At the moment, our company provides a service to people that work for certain companies or are under insurance schemes. But how many people in Nigeria are actually under an insurance scheme? We have very low, some of the lowest, actually, health insurance penetration in the whole of Africa. So we need to really seriously look at this. Um, we as a company, in collaboration with other private sector providers and the government to see how we can actually make sure that the maximum number of people benefit from services like ours. Okay, let's talk about challenges that you face, uh, perhaps on a day-to-day -day basis. I imagine, you know, in a, all, obviously all hands must be on deck. Things, you know, happen rapidly in Absolutely. the matter of minutes and, you know, maybe a couple of hours. But how do you get around them? Um, first of all, Nigeria is an extremely vast country. And um, a lot of the airports, for instance, are only daylight hours. Um, a lot of the runways are makeshift runways, so, so places that are quite short and quite like more like a bush pass where our aircraft jets can't land. And some of the areas are, you know, a good um, while offshore as well. So we have to take into consideration a number of um, unique features about Nigeria. Um, when doing our work, and these are some of the challenges, of course, landing, 
getting everybody to airports in the middle of the night, especially daylight only airports to open them up and make it safe for us to land. So logistics, um, communication as well. We have notorious phone lines at the moment. So actually the process of communica um, communication, especially to people in rural and remote areas can be quite difficult. We have areas that we evacuate where only one network works or, and that is even fluctuating and satellite phones don't work. So how uh, some of the problems that we face are also due to communication and the infrastructure as well. Moving people from some areas in some more rural areas to a place where our aircraft can land mm -hmm. by road is sometimes extremely difficult. There are some roads that are only passable during dry season and not in rainy season. So just the basic emergency medicine okay. planning becomes a lot more complex than if oh, we're working okay. elsewhere. Now, how much, did, how much has, uh, has changed within the medical trauma space since you began operations three years ago? Um, I think a lot has changed. I think that there are um, a lot more um, doctors that have come up with innovative businesses um, to help the, um, the rural poor. I think the, um, the Nigerian actual national healthcare insurance scheme is also expanding and doing its best to provide the minim minimum amount of cover for the poorest people. I think people have started looking to India um, for cheaper solutions, more affordable solutions to our healthcare needs as opposed to looking to the West where healthcare is quite expensive and we've managed to move down our costs of healthcare by implementing some of those solutions. Would you plan to expand perhaps in a short term? I imagine you know some of the equipment that you use are quite expensive. I mean you probably would require quite a fleet of planes or helicopters or choppers or something. There's a quite you know, capital intensive uh, equipment. Um, we do plan to expand. We serve quite a large area um, all of West Africa basically we, we cover. So we do, t we do plan to expand and look into getting more aircraft, especially in our rotary wing area um, where these difficult to reach rural areas and villages, um, we want to make sure that we can land in, continue to land in playing fields, continue to land on roads, etc. Um, and that's very important. Um, with regard to the cost, like I said, um, it's a global problem. It's not just an African problem. 